My name is Pet. I am the town's roving musician and pussy. I have been given distinguished honor of introducing director something something brown. <laughs> oh, you see him there. Hi, everybody. Um, I come out of a different door every night, so if you want to see that, you have to come all like the rest of the night. So. Um, yeah, last night I was out of the butcher shop. Who knows what I'll do on Friday. Hi, I'm Bradley Brown, and uh, I am the director of this production of Neil Simon's Fools, um, produced, of course, by the Hillsboro Players. Um, I'm holding in my hand this nice cup of coffee. Uh, I didn't do that the other night, so again, my, my little speech is different every night. And it's to remind you that obviously uh, this is the first time that we've had the coffee shop open during one of the uh, one of the productions and so it'll also be open to intermission so just want to remind you that if you need some uh, some refreshment uh, and if you haven't done so already then make sure you hit the coffee shop at intermission and I'll talk about intermission more in a minute um, so uh, Kalinchikov, Kalinchikov this is a village full of people who uh, were born being told that they're ignorant and uh, until a young teacher comes into town and lets them know the power that they have over their own minds and, and basically the freedom that education provides, uh, they would maybe forever live in that ignorance. And it's a very colorful world, and of course the teacher at the end uh, finds a way to make things work out one way or another, not to give too much away. Um, but, but what is really interesting about it is the uh, characters that fill this space, and uh, that is a precursor to an announcement that we are making to all of our audiences. And, and you are a, you are a smallish audience compared to the other two nights, but I, I sincerely feel that you will be an energetic and laugh-filled audience, so, uh, so be ready for that. But, um, but we are telling all of our audiences uh, that basically we have finally decided on a spring musical after much deliberation and consideration, and we're looking very forward to bringing some theater to our feeder schools like J.T. Moore, West End, Julia Green, and Aiken, and inviting them over for daytime performances, and of course we'll have nighttime performances of our spring musical, Susical the Musical. So we will be, uh, we will be uh, doing that in the spring, and we're looking very forward to that. Uh, that's uh, all of the major news as far as the theater department, uh, besides, of course, the Tennessee, or actually Nashville High School Shakespeare Festival, which will be happening here on December 7th, and the Improv Troupe, which will uh, be auditioning new members tomorrow and Wednesday, and, of course, auditions for Susical next week, and the Christmas Parade, the Nashville Christmas Parade, which will be coming up uh, also on December the 6th, a uh, day before the uh, High School Shakespeare Festival and uh, a number of other things that are going on here, uh, plus, of course, other offerings with the arts, including our fall uh, concerts, our Christmas concerts for uh, the band orchestra and the choral department. So a lot of exciting things, and all those events are in, uh, in I think, on the back page, actually, of your program. If you didn't get a program, make sure you go uh, and grab one during the intermission. Uh, so a few announcements before we begin tonight's show. First off, in case of an emergency, of course, there are exits to the rear where you came in, and also to the sides. They're pretty well lit, and we have nice clear aisles, unless, of course, random animals are running through it at any given point during the night. Um, and if you think I'm joking, I'm not. Uh, also, make sure that there, uh, there's no use of flash photography in the show. We will be uh, taking professional photos sometime next week, so if you want to get some snapshots of uh, your lovelies, or your friends, or family, or whoever might be in the show tonight, uh, you can contact us and just go to our webpage. At, uh, it's Hillsboro Players. If you do a Google search, it's the first site that pops up. That's probably the easiest way to find it. We haven't got a domain name 
yet. So it's some Google site that has a you know, 18,000 letter uh, address. So just type in Hillsborough Players and you'll find it. Also, uh, make sure, of course, that you silence or turn uh, off all of your phones. Make sure there's no texting during the performance as that light causes a distraction to your fellow audience members as well as to the actors on stage. There will be one 10 minute intermission, so make sure that you go out and get yourself a cup of coffee or some cookies at the uh, coffee shop out there. And uh, we encourage you that when you come back in, you make sure that, of course, you don't just pour your coffee all over the, all over the place. Try to keep it, uh, try to you know, drink it, I guess. And then one other thing too, in case there is some kind of emergency, whether it be a phone call, you know, if you have your phone on silent, perhaps, or a, a bathroom emergency, make sure that when you hit the doors, uh, that you that they don't slam. Those doors have a tendency to sort of slam hard. So just make sure that you ease those doors shut so they don't make a loud bang. And we are filming tonight, so we want to make sure that every other line is not punctuated with <coughs> So, um, you know, just help us out with that. I believe that's it. So everyone, sit back, laugh as much as you can because you are a tiny, tiny little crowd compared to what we've had, but you're still energetic, I can tell. And enjoy Fools by Neil Simon, brought to you by the Hillsborough Players. Kulienchikov. I like it. It's exactly as I pictured it. A quiet, pleasant village. Not too much. The perfect place for a new schoolmaster to begin his career. Well, to be honest, I did spend mornings for two years in a small children's school in Moscow teaching tiny tots rudimentary spelling and numbers. But this, this is my first bona fide professional appointment as a full-time schoolmaster. Actually, I never even heard of Kulianchikov until I saw the advertisement placed by a Dr. Zabritsky in the College Journal. Although the position was in a remote village in the Ukraine, I jumped at the chance. But I don't mind telling you that my heart is pounding with excitement. I have this passion for teaching. Greek, Latin, astronomy, classic literature. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. I don't see anyone around. Maybe I arrived a little early. I'm one of those extremely eager and enthusiastic people who's up the crack of dawn ready to begin his work. This is a very, very auspicious day in my life. Oh, excuse me. I am something, something Schnetzky. Will you be staying tonight? You don't understand. Kulienchikov will be my new home. I'm going to live here and teach here. I am, if I may say so, an excellent teacher. Oh, they all were. They came by the thousands, but not one of them lasted through the first night. Oh, it's so hard to blow these. I don't know how they should do it. You've had thousands of teachers. More, hundreds. We're unteachables. We're all stupid in Kulienchikov. 
There isn't a town or village more stupid in all of Mother Poland. Russia. Whatever. All good people, mind you, but not a decent brain among them. another 10 minutes and you'll begin to notice. I was hired by Dr. Zabritsky to teach his young daughter. Uh, 
is a good thing. Otherwise, I'd never hear from her. Good morning. My name is Leon Stepanovich Tolchensky. I'm the new school teacher. Mishkin, the postman. Slovich, the butcher. Yes, no. The vendor. How do you do? I was just talking to a shepherd named Schnetzky. Oh, yes. Something, something Schnetzky. We know him well. He was pleasant enough, although, and I hope I don't seem unkind, somewhat deficient in his mental alertness. That's Schnetzky, all right. He was kicked in the head by a horse. <laughs> oh, well, what a pity. When was that? Tuesday, Wednesday, twice on Friday. And all day Saturday. What lovely and great right wares you have to sell, madam. Perhaps I might buy some for my new employer. How much are they, please? The flounder is two kopecks and the halibut is three. I beg your pardon? If it's too much, I have a nice ripe dish for one and a half. Perhaps the dialect is a little different in this part of the country. I'm very eager to begin my new duties. Will one of you be so kind as to show me to the home of Dr. Zabritsky? That's right. Thank you. Perhaps I'll go in the one direction you haven't pointed to. Oh, hello again. Have you found your sheep? Not yet. Who is that? The new school teacher. Another one? I just met one a few minutes ago. They yeah. must be having a convention here. Count Yaskovich up on the hill isn't going to be very happy about this. That's right! Count Yaskovich doesn't like new school teachers. Why not? He's afraid they'll break the curse. What curse? The one that made us stupid since the day we were born. Oh, that one. Yes. <laughs> I've been stupid for 51 years. What about you, Schnitzky? I'll be down 43 next July. And you, Slovich? 41 for me. What about you, Hansel? Oh, I just turned the corner up. 26. The corner must be about 40 miles from here.
Did I make it up? The best, the best of health. You'll live to be uh, 80. Uh. I'm 79 now. <laughs> well, you've got a wonderful leader ahead of you. <laughs> Good. Then I must keep my strength. I'm the majesty. Law and order. I must be preserved. Did you want the prescription? For what? I don't know. Some people like prescriptions. Here, take this to the drugs. Pick out something you like and take it three times a day with a little box. Good advice, sir. How much do you got? Oh, forget it. If I ever go to medical school, you can send me a little something. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. How can we 
me help you? Well, there are a few questions I wanted to ask you first. Questions? That's what they ask. When they point to you and you don't know. Oh. He knows what questions are. I can tell. This one is going to be a good teacher. Master Tolchinsky, would you mind asking us a question? Any question at all? It's been so long since anyone has asked us a good school question. Please. Well, there are questions and there are questions. Would you like a question on mathematics or a question dealing with science? Or perhaps a philosophical question? The first one. The first one sounds good. The philosophical question. Very well, if you wish. What is the purpose of man's existence? What a question. Linda, did you ever hear such a beautiful question? I'm speechless. To think someone could ask us a question like that? Are you interested in the answer? Not today, sir. To be asked one question like that in a lifetime is worth more than we ever expected. The answer should be given to someone much more worthy than we are. But it's your birthright. Knowledge is everyone's birthright. Everyone not born in Kulinchikov. I don't understand. You would if you knew about the nurse. The nurse? <laughs> not the nurse, the hers. He means the purse. What kind of purse? The kind of purse that inflicts the wrath of God upon all those poor souls who were unfortunate enough to be born in this pitiful bin. <laughs> Do you mean, perhaps, a curse? Curse! I knew it sounded like that! Oh! Yaskovich. The girl was the daughter of the most learned man in the town. 
Mikhail Zubritsky. Zubritsky! I've heard of that name before. I've seen it. I've seen it on a front door somewhere. In this neighborhood. It's on your front door. Your name is Zubritsky. <sighs> Wait a minute. Then that means that the young man from the curse could possibly be related to our front door. Oh. <laughs> My team. I'm dealing with the intelligentsia now. I continue. The young girl's name in the curse was Sophia Zubritsky. May I ask the name of your young girl? Sophia. Sophia. Sophia Zubritsky, the exact name of the girl in the curse over 200 years ago. I can't believe it. Unless our daughter has been lying about her age. <laughs> the match was doomed from the start. Sophia's educated father learned that young Casimir was illiterate, forbade Sophia to ever see Casimir again. Six months later, Sophia married a young student, and that winner, Casimir, distraught and despondent, took his life by plowing his own grave and planting himself in it. Upon hearing of his son's death, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yalski, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yalski, Casimir's father, Vladimir Yaskovich, who caused people to tremble at the very mention of his name. Next time, don't mention his name. Casimir's father, Vladimir, and so and so, sometimes known as the sorcerer because of his ability to summon the powers of the devil himself, brought all his wrath and fury down upon Kulyanchikov. Here it comes! Here it comes! Of course. A curse upon all who fell in Kulyanchikov, he cried out. May the daughter of Mikhail Zubritsky, murderer of my only son, be struck down by the ignorance that caused my son's death. May stupidity engulf her brain. May incompetence encumber her faculties. May common sense become uncommon. And may reason become unreasonable. May her children be cursed as well. And may all their children be cursed for eternity. May all who live in Kulyanchikov be born in ignorance and die in ignorance. Unable to leave this cursed village until my final vengeance has been satisfied. That would explain why the train doesn't stop here. My initial impulse was to panic. Even my secondary impulse was to panic. To educate is one thing. To break curses is another. Excuse me, but um, are you all right, Master Potinsky? Yes, I'm fine. I, I was just thinking. Lenny, he was sinking. He was sinking. What's it like? <laughs> you mean you don't know what thinking is? I don't, and, and she certainly doesn't. Thinking. It's the thoughts that come to one's mind. It's the process which enables us to make decisions. Decisions? No, I do not think we are capable of that. But surely you know what it is you want. Oh, dear God, yes. We desperately want someone to help us. Not so much for us. We've already lived our lives, but for our child, our sweet daughter, Sophia. Did you hear what you just said? No, I wasn't listening. <laughs> it was a decision. You decided to help your daughter because you thought about it. You were capable of thought. Think. No, no, I don't think so. It just came out. Yes, out of your head where your brain is lodged. The very center of thoughts. And if it's possible to have even one tiny, infinitesimal, insignificant thought, then it's possible to expand those thoughts to ideas. Ideas into comprehension, comprehension into creativity, and finally, supreme intelligence. Would I be able to open up jars? <laughs> I have terrible trouble opening up jars. <laughs> Firmly on. Be staunch. Patience. We will break this curse by the simple, everyday, painstaking work of education. We must begin at once. I should like to start by seeing your daughter, Sophia. <laughs> Sophia? Yes. It occurs to me that since the curse started with the young Sophia over 200 years ago, perhaps the key to ending it lies with her direct descendant. Can I see Sophia? Not from here. She's in her room. We would have to sing for her. Well, what does Goldmaster ask? She may be taking her singing lesson now. She takes singing lessons? From whom? A canary. He does the best he can. 
No birds, Matsuya. Just the two. I understand. The girl, madam, please. Remember, sweetheart. Upstairs and and to the left. You'll find her a most delicate and sensitive girl. Unlike the others in the village, she has so many interests, always occupied. Occupied with what? Oh, she likes to do interesting things. Like, like touching things, wood, paper, metal. She likes drinking water. Oh. Yeah. Master Kolchinsky, may I present to you? Our daughter, Sofia Irina Irina Zubritsky. Sofia, this is the new schoolmaster, Leon Kolchinsky. Miss Zubritsky? Is that my breath that has just been taken away? Is that vision before me human, or have I too been cast under the spell? Never have I felt such a stirring beneath my breast. Watch yourself, Leon. She is your pupil, not the object of your dormant feelings of passion. Excuse me. Do you know what he was just doing, Sophia? He was thinking. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, Mama. Papa! <laughs> she is Mama, and I am Papa. Won't you please sit down, Miss Zabritsky? you if I called you Sophia? Oh, it's been so long since she's taken a test. <laughs> I would be pleased to have you call me Sophia. Oh, there you are! I'm so proud! So proud! Please, it's very distracting to the girl's concentration. I've come a very long way to help you with your education. I have every reason to believe that under ordinary circumstances, have the capability of being an extremely bright and intelligent young woman. That deep inside you somewhere is an intellect just crying to be heard. That you have enormous powers of reason. But someone has put a cloud over these powers. And it is my intention to remove this cloud so that enlightenment can shine through those unbelievably crystal clear blue eyes once again. But I need your help, Sophia. Will you give me that? Yes, you may call me Sophia. She said it again. That's twice in a row. <laughs> Get a grip, Leon. Nothing in life comes easy. I should like to ask you a few very simple questions now. If we are to begin your education, it is important that I know at which point to begin. It won't be taxing, I promise you. I would never want to be the cause of a fur or a frown on that fair face. Now, what is your favorite color? What is my favorite color? Yes, is it red or blue or green or orange? Any color at all? Which one is your favorite? I used to know that one. Hmm. I think she wants to say something. My favorite color... Yes? Is yellow. Yellow. Her favorite color is yellow. Why, Sophia? Why is yellow your favorite color? Because it doesn't stick to your fingers as much. I think she's wrong. I think it's blue that doesn't stick to your fingers as much. <laughs> That's a very interesting answer, Sophia. There is a certain logic to her response. The fact that that logic escapes me completely doesn't alter the fact that she has something in mind. <laughs> Sophia, I'm going to ask you something quite simple now. I'm going to ask you to make a wish. Do you know what a wish is? Yes, a wish is something you hope for that doesn't come true. Well, perhaps we can change all that. If you could make a wish that did come true, any wish at all, what would you wish for? What would I wish for? Yes, Sophia, what would you wish for? I would wish that I could fly like a bird. To soar over buildings and trees, to float on the wind and be carried far away, over mountains and lakes, over forests and rivers, to meet people in other villages, to see what the world was like, to know all the things that I shall never know, because of my story made here, in this place. Sophia, that is the most beautiful wish I've ever heard. Don't you see what the wish means? 
To fly like a bird means to sever the bonds that chain her to ignorance. She wants to soar, to grow. She wants knowledge. And with every fiber of my being, in the very depths of my soul, I shall gather all my strength and patience and dedication, and I make this promise that I, Leon Stepanovich Tolchinsky, shall make Sofia Zubritsky's wish come true. If you could do that, schoolmaster, I'd be in your debt forever. She touches me so. Daughter has such a sweet soul and such a pure heart. We must begin at once. Not another moment must be lost. I shall return in the morning, eight o'clock sharp. What subject shall we begin our studies with first, Sophia? I should like to begin with languages. Languages, of course. Even I should have thought of that. What language shall it be, my dear sweet Sophia? Rabbit, I think. Rabbit? A very hot language rabbit is. Hardly anyone speaks it anymore. As long as she gets a few phrases, uh, it's enough to begin with. <laughs> Am I through for today? Yes. <coughs> then I shall go to my room. Watch how she gets up from the chair. You didn't see it. Sophia, do it again. It's not necessary. She's already past getting up in chairs. They're so much smarter than in our day. Until tomorrow. In all my life, I've never looked forward to a morning such as tomorrow's. I think you're the most beautiful school master I've ever seen, Master Cholchinsky. And I pray that you do not despair of Poyanchikov, and that you stay with us forever. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm not even thinking what I'm thinking. What are you talking about? I think that our daughter has taken a liking to the new schoolmaster. If it is true, Dr. Zubritsky, that standing before you is the happiest man on the happiest planet in the universe, tell me, is she spoken for? Spoken for? Does she have any suitors? Any young men desperately in love with her? No, no. We do not talk of such things. Why not? Because there is no one. Not even him. Him? He doesn't mean him. He meant someone else who uh, it isn't him. There is someone. Who is it? I must know. It's of the greatest concern to me. If I told you who him was, you must promise to never tell him it was I who told you it was him. I promise. Have you ever heard of Count Gregor of Kulinchikov? <laughs> can't say that I have. You can say that. It's not that hard. Even Lydia can say that. Count Gregor of Yes, Lydia. yes, yes. I can say it. Who is he? He's, uh, he's one of them. The one who puts the purse on us. You mean Yavskovich? The last of his line. Tell me about him and Sophia. He proposes marriage twice a day. 6.15 in the mornings and 7.20 at nights. He cares for her that much? He cares only about avenging his ancestors. If a Zubritsky marries a Yaskovich, then they will be satisfied and the nurse will be over. Does Sofia care for him? She has said no for many years, but she cannot resist much longer. The poor girl wants to sleep late just one morning. <laughs> what kind of a man is this Count Yaskovich? You know, like the rest of us. You mean he is cursed as well? He lives in Kulinchikov. He's not permitted to lie here either. I understand. If I have a rival, I am more determined than ever to break this curse. I bless you both for your faith in me. Tomorrow, the education of Sofia Zubritsky begins. In all my excitement, I forgot to ask, what about lodgings? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll be very comfortable right here. Of course. Good night, until tomorrow. Master Tolchinsky, please, ask us again. Ask us the, uh, the question. It makes us feel important. Certainly. What is the purpose of man's existence? I'm all choked up again. I'm sorry I asked. Wait a minute. I, I think, I think I might know the answer. To the purpose of man's existence? What are you talking about? It's true. When I first heard it, I didn't understand, but now, suddenly something has come to me. I know my limitations, but still, I think I really might know. Oh my God, what am I right? Oh. Tell me, Dr. Zubritsky. Tell me what you think the answer is. I think... The answer yes. is 12. <laughs> 12. It's wrong. I can tell by the look on your face. 14? <laughs> I think you missed the point. It's 
less than a hundred. I know that even I am not that stupid. Forty-two. Eighty-six. We'll discuss it when we get to philosophy. Don't think about it. Get some sleep. Good night. Until tomorrow. Twelve. Why didn't you leave well enough alone? Why must you have answers? Aren't the questions beautiful enough? Twelve! <laughs> but, but what if I was right? We could have sold the answer. We could have made a fortune. That's it. I'm leaving now, so I'll say goodbye. I was going to stay and try and break this curse. But when he said twelve, I knew it was time to go. What I must do now is try and forget Sophia. I must. Schoolmaster! Sophia, where are you? Down here. I had to see you once more. <laughs> Without a wrap? In the cold night air, you'll come down with a chill. Oh, I never catch colds. You don't? I've tried. I've just never learned how to do it. Be great. Some things are not worth knowing. I know that something has happened a long time ago that prevents me from knowing what has happened a long time ago. If only you could know me the way that I might have been instead of the way that I am. But if you were not the way you are, then I would not have come here to help you become the way you might have been. Careful, you're beginning to think like that. <laughs> Could you? Could you care about someone who never became the way that I might have been? Did I ever care for someone who never became? I see what you mean. I see what you're getting at. Yes. Yes, I could. I would. I shall. I will. I have. I do. Is that rabbit you're speaking? It's hard to follow. <laughs> if it sounds like gibberish, it's because you do that to me, Sophia. When thoughts come from the heart, they sometimes trip over the tongue. Then I must watch where I walk when you speak. I must go. Everything depends on tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then tomorrow after tomorrow. And all the tomorrows for the rest of my life, if that's what it takes. No, it all depends on tomorrow. If we fail, we shall never see each other again. We never see each other? What do you mean? I never know what I mean. I do have thoughts, but they seem to disappear when they reach my lips. If I ever reach your lips, I would never disappear. Would you like to kiss me? With all my heart. No, I mean with your lips. An even better suggestion. Hurry, hurry! I'm climbing as fast as I can. Bro, it's 
It's rain from the skies caused by a buildup of condensed moisture. Well, you can tell that to me, too. But I used to be a substitute teacher. <laughs> Excuse me, but would any one of you know of a place to stay? What's going on? What's all the racket? I knew it. I knew he throws the water. Every time I wash my cow, he throws the water. Commissioner, would you happen to know <laughs> Ding dong! <laughs> ding dong! Dong ding! <laughs> Uh-oh! It's time for County Ask Commissioner from Walt again! This could be the day, one yes from her, and we could all be smart again. You mean Sophia is going to marry him? Uh, not unless she wanted to, but it, it would be nice to remember my first name again. But that's a terrible sacrifice to ask of Sophia. What kind of sacrifice? To live on the big house up on the hill? To eat little macaroons whenever you want? To have a maid brush your teeth in the morning? But does she love him? What? I beg your pardon. Does she love him? We don't have him. You don't have any what? Love is part of the curse. I don't understand. I hear him coming. You better leave, schoolmaster. He doesn't like people around. <laughs> Genshin, is it true there is no love in Kulyanchikov? I wouldn't know. My late husband's been gone for almost 14 years. Sorry? That's a long time to be late. I wish you were dead. <laughs> Breaking out in a cold sweat. The possibility of losing Sophia terrifies me. Sophia! I'm going Sophia. to eat raw. Sweet Sophia, time to wake up, my pretty one. Time to give me both to. Who's that? Who's that? Come out, my friend! 
Forgive me, sir. <laughs> I was just passing by. May I introduce myself? I'm a... I know who you are. You're the new schoolmaster who's come here in a pathetic attempt to break the curse of Kalyanchika. So I have just witnessed your pathetic attempt to win Sophia. Everyone's a critic. The only way the curse can be broken is if you can educate her, which you can't! Oh, it seems that easy to me. Ooh. 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 Which apparently she won't. Why don't you pursue some other girl? Because Sophia is beautiful. Did you ever see the other girls in the village? They look like me. For a man so powerful, you seem to have an inordinate lack of self-esteem. I am sorry for you. Good day, sir. <laughs> Not good day. One day. I beg your pardon? Were you not aware that if after one brief day you failed to raise your intellect, you must be gone from our village? To remain for even one second past the allotted time means you will fall victim to the curse yourself? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. I cannot believe such nonsense. Threaten me all you want, sir, but I will never leave. To be quite honest, I love Sophia Zubritsky. <laughs> It's all part of the curse. <laughs> 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 you mean Sophia cannot love him? I guess you have one day to figure that out, sir. One single day. Twenty-five meets the hours. Thank you. 
Has it been missing yet? How should I know? Why don't you check the newspaper? Good idea. Let's try it here tonight. Where does it say that? I can feel it. The papers are down. Maybe your dog did that. No, no. He's not broken. He only does it in the house. Yes, sir. What's wrong with your cow? He's tired. I've been looking him since four o'clock. Upside down. Ooh. You get a little bit more cream that way. Cream, fresh cream, right from the top. Make it right from the spinach. Oh. Oh. This morning. I must ask the parents to leave the room. By all means, we will see that you are not disturbed. Goodbye, Sophia. Oh, goodbye, my little angel. Do as the schoolmaster tells you. And let me pray for you every minute. before us is one step beyond impossible. I knew I would fail and that I had to leave Kulyanchikov like all those who have failed before me. But today, looking into your eyes, I know there is no life for me without you. Therefore, we must not think of failure. We cannot afford to despair. Only a miracle can save us, Sophia. But with a majestic, supreme effort, we must try to make that miracle happen. What is a miracle? 
A miracle is a wish that God makes. You are a miracle, Sophia. You mean God wished for me? In one of his most sublime moments. We must hurry, Sophia. This is a very primary book of mathematics. It's used to teach very young children very simple problems in arithmetic. Do you, you think it's too advanced for me? I don't think so, Sophia. We, we can't go back any further than this book. Now let us begin. One is the figure, the word, the symbol for a single item. One finger, one Sophia, one Leon, one book. Now, I'm holding up one finger. Now, I'm holding up a second finger. One plus one is two. Would you repeat that to me, Sophia? Which part? One. One. Plus one. <laughs> plus one. Is two. Is two. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. We're making headway. Slow, invisible headway. I'm very, very proud of you, Sophia. Are we ready to go on? Yes. History, please. I hope I can master it as well as I have mathematics. Well, I honestly don't think we've conquered mathematics quite yet. There are problems that could come up. One plus two is three. Am I finished with one plus one? You are if you remember the answer. I remembered it before. Is it necessary for me to remember it again? Of course it's necessary to remember it again. It's necessary to remember it for always. Do you mean you will always be asking me what one plus one is? No. Once you tell me, we can move on to other things like one plus two and one plus three. But if you can't remember the answer to one plus one, then the answer to one plus two is meaningless. Do you know how much one plus one is? Certainly. Then why is it necessary for me to know? Certainly, if you have such esteem and affection for me, you'll tell me the answer whenever I ask you. But I won't always be around to tell you. You have to know for yourself in case other people ask you. No one here ever asks questions like that. Even if I told them, they wouldn't know if it was the right answer. Because they are cursed with ignorance. And we are trying to lift that debilitating affliction. You're getting angry with me. What's the point of being educated if you get angry? When you didn't ask me such questions, you used to say the loveliest things to me. Is this what it's like to be intelligent? No, Sophia. It is I who am not being intelligent. It's frustration and impatience that drives me to such crude behavior. Forgive me? We'll start from the beginning again. One plus one is two. Repeat. One plus one is two. Repeat. No! Don't repeat the word repeat. Just say the part before I say repeat. One plus one is two. Repeat. What were you like as a little boy? What was I like as a little boy? You're shouting again. I was probing, inquisitive, always wondering why we were put on this earth and what the purpose of man's existence was. The purpose of man's existence is I've had enough of that. Sophia, you must stop asking me questions. Our time is nearly gone. Then how am I to learn? You must answer what I ask, not what you want me to answer. Then I will only know what you want me to learn. Why can't I know what I want to learn? Because what you want to learn is of no practical value. What I want to teach is acceptable knowledge. Is knowing what you were like as a little boy not acceptable knowledge? Of course not. It's of no significance at all. But it's more, that much more interesting than that which is significant. But I'm not trying to interest you. I'm trying to educate you. I know, but while you fail to educate me, you never fail to interest me, and I find that very significant. There is nothing like the logic of an illogical mind. Let's try one more time. She must be speaking rabbit like a bunny by now. <laughs> How much longer is this going to take? I haven't solved the sausage all morning. I knew it. I knew it would throw the water. Every time I wash my cow, it throws the water. Oh, good morning, Dr. Zabritsky. What's going on? I, uh, I think he's teaching her gymnastics. Dr. Zabritsky, I have a urgent letter for Schoolmaster Dolchinsky. Quiet! This is a school zone. I have an important letter for him. It's marked urgent, so I only want to read on houses first. Can't you see he's busy? Bring it back later. I don't like the way it's going. I just don't like the way it's going. Let us pray. Let us all pray to the Lord that this young man will deliver us from bondage. Let us ask for his blessing. Very religious on this end, semi-religious on the other. Quiet, quiet! The schoolmaster wants to say something. Please, God, let this be the answer to our prayers. Amen. Amen. Schoolmaster. 
Is my daughter, uh, you know, empty or full? She's the same as always. I have only moments, and I must ask this quickly, because I may not have the intelligence to ask this later. Because of my deep and unbounded devotion to your daughter, Sophia, I would like to ask for her hand in marriage. I ask this of you now while I still love her. In a few minutes, I may not know the meaning of the word. When the clock in the church steeple strikes nine, I hope you will have an answer for me. He's a nice young man. I'll say that. Very ambitious. Linia, what do you think? If the man can't break a simple curse, how's he going to put bread on the table? And what about Trimble? Who? You know, Trimble, Trimble, up on the, up on the hill, the one who throws the water. Miss is right. It is curse. You would never permit such a man. Wait! There is one chance. If a stranger marries a Kalyanchikovite before he becomes like one of us, he is free to take her away from here. I, I, I didn't know that. It was added to the curse two years ago. Do make it more interesting. Oh. You will never see your daughter again. Did you know that she was happy and getting smarter every day? I'll give it, doctor. Give her your permission. If you don't give it to her, give it to me! Uh, I don't know. It's a decision. And I can't make decisions. Let's leave it to God. Let God make the decision. What are you doing, Simon? Having my last thoughts. One final pleasurable moment of reason. Then I was right. I wish there's something you hope for that doesn't come true. I'm sorry. I cannot help you soar over mountains and lakes, Sophia. But I will not leave you. I will remain here for the rest of my days, not basking in the light of your beauty, but cowering in the darkness of my own ignorance. For that is the measure of my esteem and affection for you. I would do anything to save you from this calamity. Anything. Ding dong, ding dong, dong. To me carefully and remember it forever. I love you with all my heart. No! Listen, see church bell. I may never say these words again. No! The time is up. Savor it, Sophia. Keep the memory of what I say. No! The last chance of getting. I know the feeling. The way I gaze lovingly into your eyes as I do now. Say it, husband. Give the permission to Maddie. Quickly. All the love I would have given you in a lifetime must be compressed into a final instant. Bell! Yes, I'll give it. I'll go in there and give my permission right now. I did not love you long, but I loved you well. Bell! I'll just wait to see what time it is first. Tell everyone in Kulyanchikov that I love Bell! Nine o'clock and all's well! Wonderful news, Master Tolchinsky. Mama, Papa, everyone. Master Tolchinsky has something to say. Didn't you want to say something, Leon? Uh, oh, yes, but you said we should all listen. Uh-oh. He's got a look on his face. I've seen before. It's the same one you've got on yours. <laughs> no, I meant that we should all listen to you while you tell us what you have to say. Oh, I see. Thank you. Actually, I don't have much to say. There's no fool like a new fool. Young man, do you still want to marry my daughter? Marry your daughter? Oh no, sir, you do me too great an honor. I knew he'd never make it when he bought that white fish for me. All right, that's it. Move it along. Come on. Yo, I bet you never seen me need poopy before. All right, move it along. If you ever want this urgent letter, just let me know. Not that anything in your life is urgent anymore. Sophia, darling, go in the garden and plant some vegetables. We'll have salad tonight. Of thought will take some getting used to. Well, you might try politics. You sound very well suited for it. Oh, this is an old suit. If I went into politics, I would need all new clothes. Well, this is really just one doctor's opinion, but 
When you catch a curse, you really catch a curse. <clears throat> Don't stay out too long. I want you to go on the roof later and take the canary for a walk. I'm sorry, Sophia. Weren't we in the middle of a lesson when the clock began to chime? What were we saying? We said that you loved me, and that I should keep it as a me memory and save it, save it forever, because soon you wouldn't love me anymore. Do you not love me now, Leon? Love you? I'm not quite sure I know what the word means. Perhaps if you kissed me, would you like to? With all my heart. No, I meant to I know what you meant. Leon, the less you know, the better you kiss. The better I kiss, the more brilliant I become. Oh, my dear sweet Sophia, look at me. Look at me and tell me what you see. I see a very good kisser dirtying my father's sofa. No, you see a man of intellect inspired by love. I'm not cursed, Sophia. I still have my intelligence. I was only pretending to be stupid. You pretended to be stupid? Yes. That doesn't sound very intelligent to me. It will soon, I promise. <laughs> but the curse? It had no effect on me. Oh, I was plenty worried, I admit, especially when the clock struck nine, but when nothing happened, I suddenly realized you can't be cursed unless you permit yourself to be. Dmitrikov's lack of intelligence is self-inflicted, caused by fear and guilt, and the relinquishing of your own self-esteem to a tyrannical power. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything but the explanation. The parent tells you you are a naughty child from the day you were born. You will grow up believing you are a worthless human being. From the day you were born, you were all told you were stupid. Now do you understand? Not as well as before. I know telling it doesn't change it. It must be shown. When I was standing there, I suddenly became inspired. I hit upon a plan that will break this curse and save you from Yaskovich. What is it? I must marry Yaskovich. Are you still pretending to be stupid? No, Sophia. I don't mean Count Gregor. You will marry me, Sophia. I will be Yaskovich. Do you understand? Don't ask me that question anymore. Trust me, Sophia. The wedding will take place tomorrow. Tomorrow, the curse will be over. Tomorrow, you will be intelligent. Tomorrow, you will love me, Sophia. Can I have a kiss to tide me over? Of course, my sweet. I must go set my plan in action. Leon, I'm so excited. Tonight, I will clear all the nonsense out of my head to prepare for all the knowledge coming in. I love rearranging things. The plan begins. I must find Yasevich. Was he just talking about me? You like him, don't you? Better than me, right? makes you so unhappy. Well, that's easy for you to say. You don't like me either, do you? Well, I don't dislike you. But do you like me? No, not much. You see? Because you never do anything redeeming. Why not? Oh, I don't know. It was just how I was brought up, I guess. My father taught me since I was a little boy. I want to hold my power over these people. I must never be nice to them. Always make them fear and tremble. <laughs> Like your father? He was alright, I 
guess. You didn't like him, did you? Don't tell anyone this, but when I was nine months old, I tried to crawl away from home. <laughs> there you are. And the answer to being liked is to do something redeeming. Isn't there something nice you could do for the village? You mean like a barbecue? Well, it's a start, but I was thinking of something on a much grander scale, like lifting a curse. How can I? It can only be lifted if Sophia marries me. Or another Yelskovich. There is none. I'm the last of the line. Unless you had a son. But I'm not even married. I may be a villain, but I do not fool around. Maybe that's why I'm so unhappy. You don't have to be married. You can adopt a son. Adopt a son? Who? Me? You? I'm single, available, ready to win. I may not be very intelligent, but I will be once the curse is lifted. I've always wanted a son. Someone to take on fifty trips. I never really had a father. My boy Leon, I'd spoil you like anything. That's okay, Dad. And then people would like me, wouldn't they? They do now. Look at their faces. They're smiling at you. Even back then. Yes. I see. Oh, God bless you. You don't know what this means to me. Then let us go and sign the adoption papers. Are you ready, Dad? Dad. <laughs> let me just watch them smiling at me again. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. May we can all have lunch together next week. In the meantime, you are all invited to my son's wedding. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is have your shoes bra. Doesn't Mrs. Zabritsky look beautiful? Isn't it bad luck for the mother of the bride to see the postman before the wedding? This is it, Slovish. After 200 years, the curse will finally be over. I just had a terrible thought. What's that? Suppose they lift the curse, and I find out that I was really dumb in the first place. They're coming! They're coming! Quiet, everyone! I have a sponge cake in the oven. <laughs>
We are gathered here today, dear friends, to witness the joining to soul of this holy matrimony. It is only the goodwill and generous benevolence of our dear friend the Count that made this blessed union as possible. Thank you, Count! Will the groom step before me? That's you, my kin. Where the bride stepped before it. No, no, Sophia. The bride. The bride. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Leon, your plan was brilliant. Thank you, Sophia. Who give us the way the bride? Oh, I give it the way this bride. Why do you give it the way the bride? Oh, because he asked for me her, and I nodded my head, and he taketh her. Do you, Leon? Son of Cap, yes. Mikhailovich, Breznovsky, Fyra, Yasko. Triple, 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 No, no, not today. You don't have to say today. It's a holiday. Oh, Do you, Leon, take Sophia to hold on for this day on? I have. No, I do. You do? No, you do. He will. He does. Say it. He will. He does. I said it. Don't say what I say. Say what he says. What did he say? I do. Just say, I do. My papa says, I do. Forgetting to hate this curse, I swear to God. <laughs> do you, Sophia, take me on to hold on for this day on? Do you think this is hell? Do better or worse? I do. With a brain like that, she could have gotten anyone. The ring, please. I have it. The ring that Casimir Yastovich was going to place on young Sophia 200 years ago. What an onion! This ring on her finger. It's not going to be very handy around the house. Now repeat after me. With this ring, I did it. With this ring, I be wed. Just the bride and the groom. Thank you. With, With this, this ring, I be wed. Before I pronounce this holy union, is there any among you who have a cause or a reason why Leon and Sophia should not be joined in an eternal <coughs> wedlock? Now, the power vested in me, Chief Master Yakoli Yitchikov, I now pronounce thee. Maybe there's one tiny little thing. You have an objection to this marriage? You bet I have! This boy is not my son! This son is not my boy! What? what are you saying, father? Do you think I'm crazy? Why should I give up a cute little bundle of noodle brains like her? But the adoption papers, they are false! What? what? You trusted me so much you didn't even read them! Here in the documents is proof. I did not adopt them, I divorced them! What? According to the documents, we are not father and son, we are no longer husband and wife! Huh? Dear God, my daughter almost married a divorced woman? Oh. Leon, is this a part of the plan? No, Sophia, I'm sorry. But fear not, dear friends. I may be a venomously treacherous snake, but I am not a wet blanket. There will be a wedding. My daughter will not marry an imposter. An imposter? No, but a Yastovich. Yes. Oh. You pledged your daughter's hand in marriage 
pledged her daughter to a Yaskovich, and a pledge once given must be honored. This is the law. I have to wrote it myself. It's true. I even voted for it. And I am the only true Yaskovich here. Leon, will you not object to this marriage? What can I do, Sophia? I'm helpless. Come on, come on. I haven't gotten all day. Say the word. Let's get it over with. There's been a hotel room book for this honeymoon for 200 years. I'm sorry, daughter. With all my heart. Truly sorry. <laughs> at least she'll get better dinners at his place. <laughs> Duty beloved. We did that part. We heard that. I do. I can see the one. <laughs> do you, Sophia, take San Cangre for this long you both shall live? You didn't say the other part. What part? The part if anybody objects. And I object. What? What's that? What grounds? On the grounds that I haven't received my urgent letter yet. What kind of grounds is that? I have an urgent letter for Schoolmaster Tolchinsky. <laughs> for me? What the could it be? Huh. Finish the time money while I'm reading the letter. I can't. This is just the law. It's true. I even voted for it, ha! Hmm. It's bad news, I'm afraid. My uncle and sole remaining relative has just died in St. Petersburg, leaving me nothing but all his debts. When you're going down here, it gets faster at the bottom. Before he died, he said he blamed all his misfortunes on the selfish and vindictive character of his distant relatives, and that even changing his name to Tolchensky never helped him escape Destiny's finger. What was his name before Tolchensky? Yelskovich. Uh oh. Those distant relatives will haunt you every time! Leon! Do you realize what this means? No. What? He'll know in a few minutes! Schoolmaster, take your place next to my daughter. This time, she's going to marry the red one. I didn't say that at all. It was a bill from my former college saying I still owe them for last year's tuition. Hurry, Leon, hurry! I have planted the bomb in their minds. I now pray God for the explosion. Come on, come on. I don't want to spend the rest of my life marrying this woman. Leon, do you? I do. Sophia, do you? I do. Hey, don't want to jet. No, no one wants to jet. Going once, going twice, going three times, that's it. I now pronounce you man and wife. Your blood is just pulsating from the excitement. 
Sometimes that can cause the adrenal glands to over-secrete, resulting in a sudden rush to the head. I, I never knew you were such a brilliant doctor. Oh, I'm just an average doctor. I worry about you because I love you. And I love you too, Nikolai. Even when I couldn't say it, in my heart, I know that I loved you. Leon, are you now as you were before I became what I am? I am more than I have ever been, or dream could be possible. I love you, Leon. I adore you, Sophia. You mean it's over? The curse is over? See for yourself, Count Gregor. Blood! I should have put my money in blood! You can never go wrong with real estate. It depends, of course, on the political situation. In the Tsarist government, land reform is a very delicate issue. Such brilliant conversation! All my power over them is gone! Power is a useless weapon over the enlightened Count Gregor. We are all equal citizens here. You mean men are all equal citizens? Women have been subjugated long before there were any curses. Lydia, you know I love you, but that is a very radical point of view. <laughs> It was your faith and courage that won every opinion. No, Sophia. It's your pure heart and trusting soul that gave me that faith and courage. You club that this person, not my puny efforts. I do not wish to argue the point, Leon. I just wish you'd allow me room to express my views. I welcome your views, Sophia. But I think you should have all the facts before you become so bad. Well, got you with, schoolmaster. Yes. What about you, Count Yaskovich? What are your plans now that you're intelligent? Thanks to you, I'll probably have to work for a living now. <laughs> well, cousin, my congratulations. I wish you a long and happy marriage. Thank you. May I wish the same good fortune to you? <laughs> Please, it occurs once in my life. I know when I'm well off. <laughs> when you think of it, it's not such a bizarre story after all. Be honest. Haven't you all met someone in your life who came from a place like Kolyanchikov? An aunt, an uncle, a neighbor, your boss? Of course, once the curse was lifted, we became like any other small town or village in any other part of the world, susceptible to all the ups and downs of normal life. Well, the magistrate, for example. After two more years in office, greed got the better part of him, and he was convicted for taking bribes for political favors. He served two years in jail and eventually sold his memoirs for a fortune. Mishkin gave up the postal service and became a writer. He wrote a 600-page story about the curse of Kulianchikov and sent it off to the public. Fortunately, it got lost in the mail. Yechna, a shrewd businesswoman, put all her money in real estate and now owns 17 houses in Kulianchikov, including Count Gregor's. And as an investment for the future, she bought land in six other towns with curses on them. Slovich, with all his life savings, bought four more butcher shops in a town that really only needed one and went bankrupt in a month, confirming his greatest fears that with or without the curse, he didn't have much brains. Schnetzky, with his newly acquired intelligence, found his sheep, gathered his wool, and became a wealthy philanthropist. Count Yaskovich became more and more and more lovable, studied theology, and is now the local monk. During the drought seasons, he goes up on the hill and prays to God to throw water down on us. My dear, dear, dear mother-in-law, Mrs. Zabritsky, finally found a voice of her own. She became the first woman mayor of Kulianchikov and eventually council governor of the northern Ukraine sector. Her husband sees her by appointment only. Dr. Zabritsky became one of the finest doctors in all of Russia. He was eventually appointed as the personal physician to the royal family and was recently elected to the Academy of Sciences. As for Sophia, she was and still is a miracle. Not that we don't have our differences, not that all our days are blissfully happy, but she has a wisdom that can never be found in books. She has in turn become my teacher and has shown me that there is no spirit on earth, evil or otherwise, that can destroy a pure heart full of devoted love. As for myself, I remain a school teacher and dedicated my life to the education of the unlikely.